Welcome back to another episode of the Paycheck to Daycheck Reselling Podcast. Today's episode is going to be another Savvy Shipping with Liz, where I share all of my favorite shipping supplies and also where I get them. When it comes to shipping supplies, that's a big part of being a reseller. Those are going to be expenses that you are going to have to eventually pay. In the beginning, we did try to use as many free shipping supplies as we could. We got donations of boxes from family and friends. We tried to pick up stuff locally, but you get to a point where you're trying to really maximize your time. You don't want to be fumbling through a bunch of different size boxes, trying to find the right one, because when you start reselling, you eventually get to where you start selling certain items. A lot of people are everything sellers, which is kind of how we were. But even with that, like we have a lot of shoes, we've got a lot of clothes, we've got a lot of sporting goods. And there are certain size boxes that we want to have on hand because we know exactly what will fit in them. So when you do that, then you might have to eventually start paying for those shipping supplies. All right, so let's get into the episode and I'm going to share one of my first supplies that we actually invested in, and that was a thermal printer. Now, we have been using the Dymo 4XL because that particular thermal printer prints four by six shipping labels, barcodes for if you're sending items into Amazon, and it really is a good starter thermal printer. That was back in 2016 when we first started reselling and selling on Amazon and needed a thermal printer because we were tired of buying ink. Everyone knows ink is very expensive, and it just makes reselling and shipping items out way easier if you have a thermal printer you plug it in and then a lot of these platforms Macari can print four by six now and that's how Poshmark sends your label it's a four by six same with eBay you can have your settings changed instead of an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper it can be a four by six shipping label so it does make it very easy to ship the thermal printer is good because you're not buying ink. You're just plugging it in. The only thing you have to keep buying are the labels themselves. Now with the Dymo 4XL thermal printer, I haven't had any issues. I actually, on our Freeway Flippers YouTube channel, I have a Dymo tutorial. I took it apart one day and could not put it back together. So I decided to do a little tutorial on how to fix it if you take it apart and can't put it back together. And I believe that video has over 19,000 views. So I know I'm not alone with the complexity of having to put the Dymo back together. So that's one thing I don't like about the Dymo 4XL is that if you do get like a paper jam, something gets stuck, you have to take it apart and then put it back together. So just recently was Prime Day, as you guys know, on Amazon. And Casey and I purchased a new thermal printer that I definitely want to do like an unboxing with and kind of test it out. The one thing with the Dyma 4XL, it is its own printer. You can only use rolls of it. And with some of these newer thermal printers, you can actually use different types of labels. So you can use them that are on a roll or maybe ones that are laying flat. So that's one thing that we were interested in with trying a new thermal printer. So stay tuned and I'll definitely keep you guys posted on how that goes with the new printer that we got. Another tip with thermal printers, if you're kind of on a budget and don't want to spend a lot of money, because these thermal printers are a lot of money, you can always check locally and see if there's anybody getting rid of them. I know I've seen some people that might be getting out of reselling, selling their supplies, and the thermal printer is one of them. You can check on eBay, see if there's anybody selling it on there. But there are lots of different brands. There's Rolo, Zebra, the Dymo. I know I'm forgetting a few of them, but there's a lot of them out there. There's also like more of the private label ones on Amazon. That's the one that we ended up purchasing. It's called Jaden's Bluetooth Thermal Printer Label Printer. So any of these that I'm mentioning, um, you can definitely find on Amazon. Any of the supplies that I personally use, I'll leave some links down below if you're curious and want to check them out. So the next thing that I definitely needed to invest in was a shipping scale. Because when you're reselling, you're going to have items that are going to be below a pound, which means you're going to need a scale that can weigh out in ounces. And then also you're going to need one that can weigh more than a pound. Now there's two different types of scales that I have. One of them is just a regular scale. It's small, compact. There's a part that's actually away from the scale. So you can move it 
away from the scale. So if you are trying to weigh a box that might be a little bulky, sometimes when you put it on certain scales, it covers up the little reader. So you can't see what the weights are. So I like the ones with the external reader. That way, if you do have a box that you put on top of, you can still see what the weight is, even if it's covering up that reader. So that's always a really good one. I believe the brand is AccuTech, and you can definitely find that one on Amazon. The second scale we have, because we do ship a lot of items into Amazon and they are larger boxes, is we have a larger scale. One that can go up to a couple hundred pounds. Not that we need that, but we definitely needed one for larger boxes because the smaller scales, it just didn't work. Now, if I were getting a scale, I would definitely make sure that it is doesn't only have a wall plug in, but it also is battery operated. I think the battery operated scales are really nice because it, you can bring them to and from. Let's say that you're going and you're listing an item and you want to weigh them before you list them because you want to know how you're going to ship them. Maybe you're selling on eBay and you have different shipping policies, so you don't know which one to select. Should you choose now the postal ground advantage, or maybe you want to see if it's going to go priority or something like that. So you want to have a scale that you can bring from room to room, whether it's where you photograph items or maybe in your shipping area. Those that are closed sellers, you're definitely going to want to invest in poly mailers and clear poly bags. What I do is I use two different size of poly mailers. I use a 9 by 12 and a 10 by 13 and I buy them in different colors so that way I know exactly which one is which. So I might have the 9 by 12 which is going to be the smaller one that might be a gray poly mailer and then I have a blue one that's going to be a 10 by 13. So that way when I am going to package items I know that a I might have a smaller shirt that needs to be in the gray one because that's a smaller size. Now they're great for shipping clothing under a pound because they're gonna go postal service, ground advantage. A lot of times you can get them fairly cheap if you buy larger amounts on Amazon. The cost is usually about six to nine cents per. We all know that shipping costs do add up, but I figure for six to nine cents a piece, that's really not that much. I feel like it's really inexpensive and they're just good to have on hand for shipping. So the more that you buy, usually the less it will cost. Now, depending on if this is something that you want to do, not every reseller will put their clothing piece of clothing in a clear poly bag and then put that clear poly bag in a poly mailer. Some people do, some people don't. It's your personal choice. Uh, we do with some items, we don't with others. It just kind of depends on what the item is. I will say that it definitely helps if your item is in a clear bag first because that will protect it if anything happens to that poly mailer while you're shipping it. Maybe it gets torn when it's going through a machine and it just gives you an extra layer of safety. I will tell you that I just had this happen to me. I purchased a pair of shorts on eBay. They arrived in a postal service flat rate envelope. But luckily, the seller ended up putting the item in a clear bag first because that flat rate envelope ended up ripping. And had they not put my shorts in that clear bag, I guarantee that they probably would have gotten damaged. So that's just something also to think about is just giving your items an extra layer of protection. Now let's talk about boxes. I have boxes of all different sizes because I have told my family and friends, you guys shop on Amazon all the time, save those boxes and give them to us, which they are really nice to have on hand to have extra boxes. Some of them are kind of odd shaped and we might need a specific size. So sometimes what resellers will do is they will buy a box sizer. And what this is, it's a metal tool and on one end it has like a little, it's not a blade, but it's a little wheel and it will help kind of perforate the box to where you can then bend the box easily. So then with some of the Amazon boxes that aren't the shape or size that we need, we then use a box resizer to resize it. And the box resizer has this little wheel that helps us make a line and then we can kind of 
cut the edges of the box, fold the sides over, and it actually makes the box smaller to the size that we need. So that does take a lot of time to do. There are certain cases where we just can't find a box that will fit a specific item. So therefore we use the box resizer. It is a great tool to have. I highly recommend having it on hand just in case you never know when you're going to need it. But with certain boxes, we know that with our eBay store, we get the quarterly $25 coupon because we have a basic store that can go towards eBay shipping supplies. And we know exactly which boxes we're going to buy. We usually buy eBay tape, but they give you so many of them that really we don't need to use that every single quarter. So instead of buying the eBay tape, we end up buying specific size boxes. We know that for shoes, because we do ship a lot of shoes, they're going to go in a 12 by 6 by 6 or a 14 by 7 by 5 eBay branded box. So that's what we use our quarterly coupon on. And that really helps have specific size boxes. So when we sh sell the shoes on eBay, we can just go and pull those size boxes and use those to ship the shoes. So over time, we have definitely been able to use the quarterly coupon to then have specific size eBay branded boxes. We also have 10 by 8 by 6, 8 by 8 by 8, and then I think it's 8 by 6 by 4. So we have all those specific size boxes on hand. It just makes it much easier when we're shipping. We know if we have a specific size item, like let's say it's a hat, I'm going to grab the 8 by 8 by 8 box. I don't have to go through my stack of Amazon boxes and try to put them back together because we lay them flat to save space and try to figure out a box size that will work. Now, another tip, if you do have a lot of Amazon size boxes, you can go to Google and Google Amazon shipping box sizes and get kind of a list because every single Amazon box that you have is going to have some sort of letter or number on it. And that is going to be the specific box that they're using to ship your items. One of the familiar boxes that I know is BB1. I know that's going to be a larger box. That's going to help us ship. Maybe if we have shoulder pads or something larger, it is a larger box. But make sure you pay attention to that because then if you are used to shipping larger items, you're going to know exactly what size Amazon box you're going to need. So that's another trick. If you are looking to see what size the specific Amazon boxes that you're using, because I know a lot of you out there do buy on Amazon and you probably have a ton of them laying around. We sell a lot of sporting goods items. We sell a lot of golf clubs, ski poles, baseball bats, tennis rackets, things like that. Uh, we buy on Amazon. We buy four by four by 48 boxes or cardboard boxes. They're great for shipping golf clubs. We definitely use a lot of those. They can range anywhere from $2.60 to $2.80, which is something that you should consider because those are going to be the items that are going to be very odd shaped. We're not going to what's called Frankenstein a box, which is put a box together for golf clubs. It just would be a waste of time to do that every single time that we sold one. So we know that those are specific boxes that we're going to want to have on hand to ship those items when they sell. But recently I did some research and I found a local company. Well, I think they're, well, they're all over the U.S., but I found a company that was in Gilbert, which is pretty close to where we live, Gilbert, Arizona. And that company is called Granger. And I found that they actually have the same size boxes that we buy on Amazon, only for much cheaper. So those boxes that we buy on Amazon for $2.68, I think is what we last paid for a uh, pack of 25 of those golf club size boxes. We usually pay more because we have to pay for shipping. I found Granger and it's local. I placed an order on their website and then went and picked them up. So I didn't have to pay for the shipping charges. And I got the box cost from $2.68 down to $1.81. So there are places that you can check locally to see if they would have kind of those odd shaped boxes that maybe you're going to use a lot of. Now let's talk about packing supplies. Now with packing peanuts, I will start off. You are on your own with this one. One of my biggest pet peeves, I do not like packing peanuts. I don't know if you're listening, if this is something that you also agree with. I don't know why they bother me. I think it's because they cling and they just are really, to me, annoying. I just don't like packing peanuts. And it frustrates me because my sister 
doesn't realize that I don't like them. And when she gives me her shipping supplies, there's always a random box with a bunch of packing peanuts. I've got to tell her no more peanuts. You can score a lot of packing peanuts because I believe people are just like me and they just don't like them. They want to get rid of them. If you do like using packing peanuts, definitely check locally, see if there's somebody giving away them for free. I feel like that's something that a lot of people do get rid of. So check your local marketplace. We use a lot of air pillows. I'm a firm believer that if you are shipping a package, you should shake it before you ship it. I don't care if it's a pair of shoes inside of another box. Anything that you're shipping should not move in the package that you're shipping it in. Air pillows are really good for making sure that items don't move. We save all of them from Amazon. So air pillows are really good to have if you have a lot of space in a box and you need to make sure that your item doesn't move. Air pillows are great and Amazon loves using them as well. So I'm sure if you're buying items on Amazon that you can stock up, those are really good. Bubble wrap, I think bubble wrap is something that everyone should be using, especially if you're going to be shipping items that might be fragile or just need that extra protection when shipping. I've seen locally, once again, with these shipping supplies, such as bubble wrap, people trying to get rid of them. One of the problems that I see with that, if they're free, they tend to not be on a roll. I really like having the bubble wrap on a roll. We buy them actually on eBay, and I'll link the store down below. This seller only sells bubble wrap. And it's crazy because they only have three listings, so they definitely have a little niche. What we buy is the package that they have, which is four rolls of 400 foot by 12 feet. And it only costs $40, which I know that's an expense. But like I said, we do sell a lot of breakable items. And so I like having the rolls. That way I can just keep rolling it. I don't have those individual squares of bubble wrap that I then have to tape. And it just makes it a little bit more time consuming when you're trying to wrap the item. Packing paper is another thing that we use, especially when we want to, like I said before, with the air pillows, try to take up space inside the box so the item inside doesn't move. The packing paper is great. It's going to be a little bit more in weight, um, but it's something that could be really good in certain situations. If you're trying to do the corner of a box, like an air pillow would be kind of challenging to just put in a corner, but like packing paper you could put in each corner of a box. Now, this is a tip that Casey told me. He was on a Facebook group and he saw somebody post about this. But somebody said, check with your local newspaper. See if they have any leftover end rolls. So these rolls that the newspaper companies will get, they might not have enough room to print what they need to print. And so they have a lot of leftover paper on those rolls. So somebody said, reach out. Sometimes they will be just giving them away because otherwise they're just going to trash them because they can't use them. So that was a good tip that Casey found. Next up, let's talk about organizing and storage because both are very important when you're reselling. You want organization. You want a place to store items. So what we do for bins is we were using cardboard boxes. Like I said, the 1BB or BB1 Amazon box. We had a lot of those that we would number and then put our items in on eBay and well, really enlist perfectly for Poshmark and Macari. Every item has a specific SKU and in that SKU, the custom SKU is the box where the item is. When we're listing, let's say I am listing a pair of shoes, Adidas shoes, and I'm going to list them in the custom SKU. I'm going to put the date that I listed them, and then also the box where they're at. So it might be box 51, box 49. It's in list perfectly and in the listing on each platform that it's listed on. That's just how we do it. We used to do the cardboard boxes. Since then, I have broken them down and we got rid of them all because at Costco, we just became Costco members again. Well, they were running a sale on these plastic bins. And with the discount, for the plastic bins, they ended up being $7.49. Right now, we have eight storage racks and we ended up purchasing 68 of those plastic bins. 68. 
We did that because we wanted everything to be organized. We wanted all the bins to be the same size, to be able to fit on these storage racks that we have. And it looks really good. I'll have to take a picture and post it on the P2D podcast Instagram so you guys can see what it looks like. But it really has helped us with organization. So what I did was I used thermal printer, I used Dardymo, and I printed out each label had a different number and I put that number on the bins. So we, right now we have bins one through 60 and then we have eight left over for whatever else we're going to do with those bins. We might not need them for product and inventory. So we might end up using them for personal, but they were really good. And I'm glad we did that because now we have a lot more room to put more inventory. Before with some of the different size boxes, we'd couldn't fit a lot of items in there, or maybe some of the boxes were really big and they got really heavy. So now that it's organized and all the same, it looks really good. And I just feel so much more organized. I forget where I found this next one, but I bought a wine rack off of Amazon and it's small. It can fit six bottles of wine. And I use that to store my poly mailers. I take my poly mailers and the clear bags and I roll them up and then I put them on the wine rack. When I sell an item, the wine rack is right there on our shipping table and I just take the poly mailer, put the item in, boom, done. So the wine rack is a really good organizer to hold poly mailers and poly bags. Next up, using a pop-up hamper for storage. With the air pillows, we go to the dollar store and we've got a couple pop-up hampers and we use them to store the air pillows, bubble wrap, styrofoam, any kind of leftover shipping material. I've also heard of people using a stuffed animal net slash hammock. If you remember, I know when I was younger in the corner of my room up top, I had a little net that I kept all my stuffed animals. I found this from Chaz from the Side Hustle Network. But I remember I saw on his story on Instagram and I thought that is a really good idea too if you want to get your shipping supplies off the ground and maybe in a corner somewhere, maybe in your spare room if that's where you keep your shipping supplies, using one of those nets to, to keep your shipping supplies. And then that way it, it, you're really trying to maximize the space that you have because shipping supplies do take up so much room. Now for our shipping station is what I call it. It's just a fold-up table, like a fold-up camping table. We found them locally, and it's just in the corner of our office. It's enough space to store our tape, the wine rack, a garbage, our scale, scissors, things like that. It's not that big. So don't think that you need this large table or this large area. As long as you have a space where you can bring an item, and then you can prep it for shipment. You can put it in a box, put it in a poly mailer. You don't need a lot of space. I like using fold up tables because then we can move them around and it's not this like big, heavy, bulky table that, you know, you're going to need multiple people to use. We like to change our office area up a lot. We just actually recently did. If you're watching on YouTube, I have plants now behind me. I am in a different area of our office a better area for doing this podcast. Actually, I'm where we would do our shipping. We had our shipping table where I'm sitting right now and we moved it to the other side of the room. So having the folding table, it really gives you a lot of flexibility to move it around and try out where it fits best. Now, this next thing I got the idea from Melissa and she was one of our guests on the podcast talking about being a stay-at-home mom and balancing reselling. If you haven't seen that episode, definitely check it out. I'll link it down below. A lot of good tips, especially if you're listening or watching and you are a parent and have small kids. So what she does is she has some clothing racks in where her room is, her reselling room. And when she goes sourcing, she comes home and she actually hangs the items that she purchased to resell. And I really like this idea. So we have clothes racks in our photo room, which is our spare bedroom. And I got two clothing racks. So anytime we go out sourcing and we come home, I'm going to hang those on there on the clothes rack. And what is really helpful is Casey also lists with me. You know, he does some of the listing. He's actually working on that in the spare bedroom right now as I record this podcast episode. Um, he's in there right now, but it's just really good to have a clothes rack because he knows those are the clothes that I haven't listed yet. So it's really helpful. He doesn't have to ask me, you know, 
where are the clothes that need to be listed? We know that that specific clothing rack is the one that needs to be listed. Now I have a second one only because we were running low on space, which is another reason why we ended up buying all those plastic uniform bins because I was running out of space. So I actually used the clothing rack to hang items that were listed. So that's another way that you can use a clothing rack. We bought them at Goodwill. I believe we paid maybe $7 for each one. Super inexpensive and they're just really good to have. Shipping is definitely something you're going to have to think about as a reseller. There's so many supplies out there. Some resellers use these supplies, some use others. It really depends on what you sell and what fits your needs. And that's the best thing about being a reseller. There is no exact blueprint. There's no blueprint that every single reseller follows. Part of reselling is learning from other people and then making your decision on what's going to fit your business. So I think locally is definitely a really good place to start with some of these shipping supplies that I've mentioned in the episode. If you're listening on YouTube, let me know what are your go-to shipping supplies that you use. If you're listening to the podcast on any of the podcast platforms, reach out to us on Instagram. We're going to do a post on Instagram about shipping supplies and let us know exactly what you use for your business. Maybe some of the ideas that you guys have out there. I didn't mention this episode and I can learn from you because I love learning new things. I'm open to it. And I think that's what's going to help you grow as a reseller. Before I end, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who is listening. We could not do this podcast without you guys, without our amazing day checkers reselling community. If you're not part of the Facebook community, make sure that you join on Facebook. I hope everyone is staying cool this summer in Arizona. It has been miserably hot, but I am managing. I am working through and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.